Okay, so welcome back from the breakout sessions. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a quick recap of all of the four sessions that happened in parallel. So we have all the rapporteurs here that were diligently taking notes for the last few minutes who are going to attempt to recap all of what was said in a very quick few minutes. So, I mean, that's a very difficult thing to do. So we're gonna give them all a... <laughs> a little leeway for, for, for their chance at it. And then in the end, uh, we're actually going to close because we're getting very near the end at this point. So, Rebecca, maybe we'll start from your end. Oh, all right. Uh, goodness. goodness. Uh, so, we started off with a, the, we started off the discussion with, with uh, really the first discussion is which question are we going to answer? And we realized that what we were thinking about is um, how we're emerging out of this crisis with the COVID and how we now have time to think about the future. And that helped us realize that really what we were talking about was the first question, this sort of broad idea of, you know, how do de designers address the future? So we talked a bit about how, what are the problems with designers on, on how do we communicate the value of what we do? How do we become more integrated into the design process? Uh, how can we address the future if we are not part of the process from the beginning? So we realized that one of the difficulties was in communicating the value of what we do to the educational systems, to the political systems, and how we need a common language in order to express that. But then we sort of focused on how everything changes, that the future isn't static that our perceptions changes, our learning, our environments change, and this is where something such as the Code of Conduct becomes important because it it's, was developed out of a regional application of Codes of Conduct from which we sort of developed some universal, some universal ideas, what is common to all of us in how we behave as designers, how we conduct ourselves, and how we make ourselves part of an answer for the future. But we have to bear in mind that that too shall change because the future changes. So then we, we wondered, so how do we, how do we approach others when they come to us to ask for solutions? And we realize that what's important is the questions that we ask people. And that in asking those questions, a very vital skill is waiting to hear and hear their perspectives. That we need to um, share a, a common definition of what we do in order to facilitate that discourse. And that's where we started sort of focusing on the fact that the goal of a designer really is to facilitate, to um, integrate ourselves into the design process by facilitating, uh, an identi uh, facilitating the identification of what the problems are in order to develop what the solutions are. Um, part of the difficulty with that is that people don't know what we do. They don't realize that we can do that. They don't understand it, particularly on a po policy level. And a part of that problem also is that we work in bubbles. We work in, a, in little communities where people understand what we're doing, but we then have to integrate ourselves outside of those bubbles. So, um, so one, of the, one of the problems we need to address is becoming a thought leader in the process. Um, I think where we ended up is what set of skills do we need as designer? Again, we went back to the idea of listening, of not being egocentric, of becoming involved earlier by, by in fact, um, uh, asking those questions of the clients. Um, and that listening is then a layer of a larger skill set of engagement, of building trust, of, of facilitating that process of finding the solution. Um, somehow we ended up with cake. <laughs> what we realized is that uh, when we bake the cake, we have to ask ourselves, why did we bake the cake, for whom, and for how? Um, and I think that's pretty much where I ended up with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Ah, one last thing. We did describe immersion as a key value to in becoming facilitators and becoming communicators and asking the questions that we do in fact immerse, immerse ourselves into the process with our clients and therefore become part of this ever-changing future. Um, so in our team, we focused on the question, how does one ensure future designers are equipped, equipped, equipped with uh, to make 
the ethical and moral decisions that they will need, need to make. Um, and let me put this here. So um, we started um, talking about how it's crucial that we really understand the problem first uh, instead of providing um, copy-paste uh, and um, visual solutions. We really need to understand the problem and then understand the solution and how it will affect uh, or enhance or affect other lives. Uh, and then we realize we refer to the clients as them, like they're um, separate, uh, but we're all human, so we need to um, not forget this. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's okay. Mm, okay. Um, and we were talking about the portfolio uh, example that David mentioned in his uh, speech, uh, how we are used to showing our portfolio and not um, communicating what we do. Uh, so it's, we are the ones who, who is presenting this as a pure aesthetic profession and it's not problem solving. So this is a good uh, way to start thinking about this. And um, we also talked about uh, Patrick's um, example how they choose the designers. Uh, they, they don't choose according to the portfolio, they choose according to the design solution. And uh, the judging cr criteria is uh, what matters and it's not about previous work, past work. So this is a good approach. Um, and um, we talked about uh, the institutes looking at this, maybe in Singapore, they're, they're, some others in other um, countries, uh, but the, the buyers uh, or the client or them are the ones uh, we need to communicate uh, and we are the ones to communicate this um, to them. And um, Dorothy added that, uh, uh, stressed that instead of design thinking, yeah, getting designers to think is <laughs> the, the main thing maybe. Um, and we need to reframe the definitions. Um, the design fundamentals, maybe um, during the education, Yannick suggested that uh, we should also add the problem solving or engaging community or these things we talked about into the basic design education and include them in design fundamentals instead of talking about color hierarchy and no, 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 the visuals. We need to engage these uh, to our education programs and um, very basic design education. And um, another idea was, how about uh, we send portfolios with no images? <laughs> we, we just uh, send our portfolios in different ways. We are, designing, uh, we are designers, we are supposed to think outside of the box, so that's a good idea. Um, and we ended up with not cake, but heart surgery. Oh, uh, yeah. oh I like yours better. <laughs> and um, if you need heart surgery, if you have a heartache, um, you don't just see a sign uh, of a doctor and just go there and just do my heart and um, fix my heart. You find, you research uh, the good uh, doctor, the good heart surgeon. You don't go to another doctor for your, another part of your body. Uh, so you do, do your work and um, the clients, them, they also need to do this, uh, but we are the ones that should educate uh, how it works. So it's also our responsibility. <laughs> so I'll, we, I'll start with where we ended. We ended with how are your algorithms being designed? And we talked about these kind of in the context of opportunities created by a global crisis, we had a few things. Work practices have changed. People are working more effectively um, in different spaces and are noticing that they don't need such big studios. There's a lot of international collaboration possible that's really exciting. And in some contexts, people are actually, especially for graphic designers, there's, uh, people are becoming more sophisticated in their skills. There was also note of how social media has created a lot of um, this kind of new space of awareness and momentum on issues that otherwise, issues like inclusion, let's say, or accessibility that um, didn't have the same traction as they did formerly. Turn the 
the page. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, then we also got a little tangled on ethics and the ideas. There wasn't like consensus around um, the idea the idea of whether we need to have a kind of shared vocabulary for designers. Some people were thinking it sounded a bit like recruitment or maybe it doesn't matter which terms you use. Um, others thought that it was important to have a kind of shared vocabulary. There was also some concern over things becoming too purist and that it can ex- be exclusionary or some people who are working in the field might not feel belonging. Um, there was also, are we spending too much time justifying and defining what we do instead of just doing it and just getting out there and getting down to doing it? Um, what else did we talk about? Curriculum. There's definitely consensus on transdisciplinary knowledge getting passed on from a young age and that we should expand and broaden what young people and people of any ages learn. We also said that design itself has no ethics, that actually we just need to be decent human beings. And maybe I'll end there. I think we all kind of focused on the same question. It sounds a lot like the idea of forming future designers was a big part. Um, so we actually did that as well. Like we, we answered the question that Malike said out loud, which was the question about how do we form future designers to ensure that they're going to be able to do the work in front of them. Um, and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of common themes here because that the idea that we're, we're actually people, that we, we talk about ourselves as designers and professionals and whatever, but in the end, if we're decent people with morals and values, then we're going to be good designers and good doctors and good everything else, that that's kind of a common moral thing. There was a bit of a discussion now about the younger generation and the difficulties of teaching uh, young people that are you know connected to social media or things like that. Um, And also the idea of how much of it is actually between teaching students or them teaching us and how much of it is about engaging students and keeping and passioning them with the things that we're trying to teach them. And then we discussed a little bit about like whether this kind of ethical foundation was, you know, in terms of teaching, was it like a foundational course on ethics? And so we're starting off from that point, like how they're like, we, it was said at one point that there's like a big difference between the technical teachings and the philosophical teachings. That you know the technical teachings it's pretty easy to evaluate whether someone is you know at the right level on their drawing skills or their AutoCAD or their renders or whatever. But uh, the philosophical aspect behind it's kind of to give a, a general common core. Um, Um, There was this idea of show, don't tell, that actually maybe we're talking about it a little too much and we're putting a lot of emphasis on this kind of top-down teaching methodology where you make a course and you like pump it into people's heads rather than, you know, showing examples and seeing how that's done within your community. Um, it was brought up that, you know, sometimes, for, especially for designers, the culture is just to facilitate change but and to force this change without actually knowing what the change is for. Sorry, I'm kind of reading my notes quickly. Um, we, one of the comments that was brought up, and I think it's actually considering our conversations of the last few days, is this idea of, aren't we putting a bit, a lot on designers here? It's like all of these life issues and everything that's going wrong, and we're expecting designers actually to make, you know, to change all those things, and how much leeway do we actually have with our clients? Um, and the, you know, discussing the the importance of of educating clients and incorporating that into it. But really, I mean, I think that we have a tendency as designers to get into this whole discussion and think we can, we, we do everything and it's our fault, but we can change everything and we, we're the solution maybe to be a little bit more humble and accept that we're, we're a small part of it and there's a big ecosystem that we're working within. Um, someone said that professionalism implies some education of the client as well. It's not just the education of the designer. Um, The concluding statement, well, I highlighted this as the concluding statement is that the most important trait is to keep the possibility to always change. 
there was a bit of a discussion actually, I missed it somewhere in my notes, but the, the, one of our, our conclusions was, well, actually you have to teach them how to think because I mean, the, what's, what's ethical today, what's moral today is connected very much to how things are produced today and how things are today. But if they know how to think, if they know how to, you know, analyze what's happening, how to, how to really read through the lines and see where the things are going, that actually maybe the question is not so much to teach ethics and morals, but to teach, you know, philosophy and to teach a capacity to think. Um, so this final thing of, you know, at the basis as designers, if we're always able to change, I mean, if we're always open to realizing that change is constant and what you think you know today is probably not gonna be true tomorrow, then you're always gonna be able to adapt to that. So to keep an open mind and not expect constancy and actually be prepared for the change. I think that's the end of, oh. No, we didn't talk about, we didn't talk about cake or doctors, we talked. This is our last activity and we're really at the end of the day. Um, we're gonna skip the summary because we're way over time, but I, I actually, we are gonna do the close. I'm just a few short words of, of acknowledgement at the end, but this is it. So I'm gonna let you all sit down. I'm gonna ask Jonathan to come up. So just a little short close and we'll let you go for the day. Thank you, Anna, very well done. Thank you all for participating so much into that. I always love those deep dives after our brain's been absorbing so many great ideas and thoughts and considerations. Uh, very quickly so we can end, I just wanna say thank you so much for participating. Thank you for being here. And I especially wanna thank our member, um, Lithuania Design Association. And I, we call them our, our member, but quite frankly, these are our friends. So thank you to those that are Gediminas, Elgerdas, Jonas, thank you for being here, deeply appreciate that. Without the dedication of our members, we would not be able to provide meeting points for our community. And that's what we are. We are a community. And as Lena said, a family. Special thanks go also to the Lithuanian Council of Culture and to Kaunas 2022 for generously supporting these activities. I would also like to thank all those organizations that came to Kaunas and shared this experience with us. So thank you for joining us. This has been the 2022 platform meeting. I know that I'm taking a lot away from this and I hope you are too. Uh, we're not completely done with everything, but this will conclude our, our formal platform meeting. Thank you.